जय श्री माता जी अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन लेट अस ऑल बाउ डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडली एंड गिव अवर सेल्फ संबंधन let us place both our hands on mother earth let us humbly pray to shri mata ji to absorb all that is negative into the earth element our hands in our lap and let us bring our attention in our sastra with our right hand let us give a slight massage on our sastra Shri Mataji, I make us all thoughtless. In 
this state let us now listen to shimata ji speech yesterday <coughs> we talked about the center which is called as the nabhi chakra or we can say the one that manifests the solar plexus in the place grows and how the incarnations of the primordial master the principle of primordial master the adi guru are guarding it also <clears throat> one has to know that if somebody is your guru then that guru cannot live like a parasite on your money that's one simple principle one has to know you cannot pay for the knowledge for the realization or <clears throat> for the maintenance of your guru you can't do it no guru will accept it even you won't if i tell you you come and stay in my house free of cost you won't any person who has self respect won't accept such a situation this parasitic living comes because such people are extremely sly and of a very low level not to be called as gurus <coughs> we are enamored more by their outward show of worldly possessions that they have the worldly things that they try to show off anyone i mean even pope is like that even our shankaracharyas in india are like that there are many gurus who are like that they all do all these things collect the money collect all this wealth and try to show off like i feel quite surprised while christ wore the crown of thorn these people are wearing thorns of diamonds upon their heads how can they do it i mean it is something one can't understand this they should really feel hurt to do such a thing but they think they are the contractors of god of christ and everyone and they can do what they like <coughs> this system started since long and for us it becomes sort of a practice that we take it for granted if somebody says that you have to pay for your realization you have to pay for your spiritual practices we think it is absolutely absolutely normal you may pay at the most for this hall you may pay for the petrol but you can't pay for god's love you cannot pay or for the knowledge of god you cannot pay <coughs> so this is what one has to realize that these days especially your los angeles as the name is the lost angels are residing here and they are so much lost more because of invasion from these fake people in this country if i criticize them they don't like it and they say why do you want to criticize i said should i garland them for spoiling everybody's kundalini and spoiling all their chances for their realization i will always criticize them very openly even by name if it comes to that <clears throat> and i have to point it out to you people because you are seekers you are seekers of truth and they have no business to mislead you if they want to make money there are other ways they can become smugglers they can do all kinds of things they have no business to spoil the kundalini of the people or to ruin them but i think they have a deeper deeper intentions and that is they want to create the antichrist regime here they want to create a regime of satan and that's why they are trying to destroy the saints because if the saints are destroyed then they'll be much better off they are only after the saints and not after the people who are not interested in god those who are not interested in god are never hampered by them or never troubled by them so it's a double waged attack and one has to be very very careful with these people and should understand that you all can become your own guru 
Actually, there is the spirit of primordial master within you. And that spirit resides in the region that was shown yesterday. We call it as void or you can say the gap or the ocean of illusion. And this is to be maintained, as I told you yesterday, by the ten commandments which are told to us. Now we go to another center, which is the center of heart. The center of heart is actually behind the sternum bone. And <clears throat> I tried to tell you yesterday that till the age of 12 years, the sternum bone creates antibodies and spreads them in the whole body to fight and combat any foreign invasion, even of the dead spirits of the invasion of these false and fake people. Now the deity behind it, as I told you, is the mother of the universe. Now we go to a higher center here, which is called, is the center of Vishuddhi. <coughs> you must know that in the image of this world, America is placed at this center. Canada and America North America and South America are all this center. And this center is the center where man became a human being. In the sense that a man from the animal stage who just was living like a, uh, we can say, an ordinary animal man became a human being in the sense that he raised his head and started walking straight. Then this center started going. This is the center of responsibility. When he took the responsibility upon yourself, himself, like America itself, it always takes the responsibility of doing good to everyone. I mean, at least they talk that we have to, all liberty, fraternity, all these things, ideas are coming from this great country of yours. I mean, at least they talk, as I said, that they have to proclaim these big ideals and they feel that they are responsible they are responsible to permeate these ideas into the whole world and they have to take a stand to keep this going. All right, it is true that you, they have to do it, but they must first of all discover their own nature. Unless and until they have discovered their own nature, they are going to be always in a very con great confusion and also not only in confusion, but in a sense of insecurity because they don't know whether they are strong enough or not, whether they have any powers or not. Now this Vishuddhi Chakra, this center, which is the center of, uh, I say, responsibility, is very important from many points of view. The greatest of all is that it is governed by the Saturn. Saturn governs it. Now you have been to the Saturn and you have seen that there is a big ring around the Saturn. And because of this ring, it is protected. The same way Saturn is represented here on this earth in America. And it has a tremendous ring around it, which is to be discovered. Unless and until we discover that ring and enlighten it, we'll be always insecure. Actually, if the Americans get their enlightenment, this ring can come to their help. Already I think that uh, ring is already active. We are feeling the effects of that and already on the problems of the land sliding down and all that is nothing but this ring is acting around and it is trying to warn people to be on the righteous path. We have lost the sense of righteousness completely. I mean, one cannot talk about righteousness in these modern times. I mean, righteousness means you must pay your tax at the most. Or slightly could be you can't kill your mother. Maybe that. I don't know. What righteousness people understand in modern times is not righteousness. Righteousness is a thing in which we rise towards God in our purity and in our holiness, in our morality. We have self-esteem, we respect ourselves, we have our self-respect, and all these things are already taught to us and told to us. Especially Christ has said that you say, Thou shalt not commit adultery. I say, thou shalt not have adulterous eyes. To that extent he went. 
and we are the Christian nations here. And these are the Christian nations who are told not to have adulterous eyes, but we cannot keep our eyes even steady for one minute, even for one minute. This is what we have done to ourselves, to our morality, and we are not conscious of it. And when we do not have our morality, if we do not have our chastity, what do you have to defend? You cannot defend yourself with nitrogen bomb or hydrogen bomb, with anything you cannot defend. You can only defend them if you have your own, own personality own self-respect, own idea of saving your private uh, life in a sacred manner. There is no idea of sacredness, there is no idea of holiness, there is no idea of cleansing. This has to work out. This is the time when a human being raised his neck, a new system started growing in him which is not in the animals. The ego and superego, which are the byproduct of these two powers, which is the left side is the power of desire and the right side is the power of action. The two systems started, the two institutions started growing within us. The first one is the superego, the another as the ego. And when these two systems went and met at the top of our head, it became calcified and we developed our I-ness. You became Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z. Once this happens, you get the idea that you are independent, you are free, thus you got your independence. <coughs> but independence and freedom doesn't mean license. It never means license. Or it never means also that you are on your own. If you think you are on your own, you are lost. You are absolutely lost to yourself and to others. You are malignant. If you think you can live all alone, you are a malignant cell in the whole. And it's a very dangerous sign when we accept such a situation that we say that we are on our own, what's wrong in this and what's wrong in that. All our behavior has to relate to the whole. Even Roosevelt, I mean such a uh, president you had, I would say, that he said that poverty anywhere is a threat to prosperity everywhere. He could see that. Poverty anywhere is a threat to prosperity anywhere. He could see this point at the level of poverty. I mean, it's, it's not so important, poverty part. But he saw that, at least the poverty level, he could see that. Of course, you had great people like Abraham Lincoln, who gave you such great ideas. He was a realized soul and he talked of great things. I don't know even now if Americans can understand him. But after realization, you will understand that he was the man who really gave you a very great foundation and you should not try to dig them out. So this sense of responsibility grows in the human being. He starts growing as an egg, as a closed cocoon. The cocoon is formed by the ego and the superego and you become Mr. X, Mr. Y, Mr. Z. Now this freedom was given to human beings to develop, to grow. Like in the egg, the bird grows into that state, into that maturity like a bird. But in human beings it is a different thing. Imagine a human egg can just crawl into anything. It can go into any problems it wants. It can go into any extremes. You tell them that you better do some exercise. Then they'll go so mad that three hours in the morning and three hours in the night they'll be just running. Like mad, they are all the time running. You tell them anything, they're going to such extremes. I mean, tell them anything, even in Sahaja Yoga I've seen. They cannot understand that there is no need to be extremist. And this extreme character within us comes to us because your attention is outside, not inside. And it has happened to us because of this new phenomena that came into being when you raised your head. It's through the parallelogram of forces, you see, the, <coughs> the power that came into us got deflected and we got our, see, the attention went outside and not inside. That's how our attention is outside. And whatever we know, we know through the outside. Inside we cannot take our attention. If I say, you please pay attention to yourself, you cannot. I mean, if you want to make believe, you can, yes, my attention is inside, that's not the point. I mean, there are people who can even, into that extreme they go, that they believe, yes, yes, we are inside, we are one with God, we are connected with God, we are, uh, what? 
we are twice born, all sorts of certificates, I mean all kinds of certificates they will have, but their attention is outside, it is absolutely outside, their attention is not inside. So you live on the le left or the right means you live in the past or the future, you cannot be in the center that is in the present. Now to get that attention inside, this happening of Kundalini awakening takes place, the Kundalini rises, that happening, supposing something happens at the back there, what will happen? Your attention will be attracted. So that's why this hap uh, happening of the Kundalini takes place, the Kundalini rises and you get that attention attracted inside by which your attention gets enlightened and when the attention is pushed through, you reach that state where the seat of your spirit, I mean the Atma is there and you get your enlightenment. Of course the spirit sits in your heart but the seat of the spirit, you can say the capital of your spirit is on top of your head. <coughs> now to get over Vishuddhi, this thing, we have done every sort of extreme things and surprisingly we always do things which are just against our basic nature. For example, I would say that England is the heart of the universe. So it is lethargic, absolutely, to make an Englishman even get up in the morning, even at 10 o'clock means moving an elephant. It's an impossible, I mean the greatest sin for you is to wake up an Englishman at about 10 o'clock in the morning, is the greatest sin according to the lethargic England. Of course they are overactive, they have now been vanishing, they were overactive, so as a result of that, now we have absolutely lethargic English people. They eat a lot like gluttons, they sleep a lot. Even in my programs, some Sahaja Yogis who have come, they just go off to sleep and it's more surprise. They are so lethargic, you can't imagine what sort of people they have become. I have now thousands of them as Sahaja Yogis, but it happens like that. We can say that Europe, Europe is the liver, is the liver of the universe. When you say that, it's drinking, the liver is drinking. Europeans drink morning till evening, if you ask them give me a glass of water, they will give you a little bit distilled water in this much. But for them only beer you can drink, you can't drink anything. Imagine the liver is drunk, is absolutely drunk, you can't talk to them after one o'clock. They are not there, they are in the pub or they are lost somewhere, you just can't talk to them. We have got <coughs> now America. America is the Vishuddhi Chakra, or I would say India. India is the Kundalini, is the Kundalini, the power which has to be awakened and they are sleeping. Indians are not bothered about getting awakened, they are not bothered about God, what they are bothered, how to get more money. They are developing. They are not bothered about getting awakened, there is no seeking. If you tell somebody in India that you have to seek God, they say, what? Are we primitive? They cannot understand that you have to seek beyond. For them it is primitive behavior to seek God. They are modern, they like plastics, they like nylons. I mean, we can say that early thirties of America could be, if you go to somebody's house, they will show you a very, very great thing they have and you will discover it is nothing but one of the plastic uh, sofa sets which are blown into. So this is the this is the temperament of the Indians who have got, who are in living in the saintly land of India, which is a yoga bhumi, which is the country where the yoga resides in every particle of that country, where people are most unaware. If you talk to anybody and if he is westernized, then God saves us. If they are westernized, they are absolutely finished people. You just can't talk to them, they, they are neither here nor there, they don't understand God, they don't, they have no seeking, nothing. They live only to earn money, earn more, earn more, earn more. Now we have this great country, America. As I said, it is the Vishuddhi. America smokes the best. I mean, the, all the smoking, the amount of smoking goes on here. God must be seeing the chimney being placed here. The whole country is smoking, smoking, morning till evening, like mad. First of all, they have an idea that you should be very thin. I don't know from where they got this idea. But you should be so thin, they will just take coffee, 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 morning till evening. 
just now I discovered this also. All of them will take nothing but coffee, you will put on weight, you will put on weight, they will not take sugar. Sugar is very important for attention. Then they will become thin, then they will become irritable, hot tempered, volcanic, you can't talk to them. Then they will have a cigarette with them because they have to overcome that temperament. You can't talk to an American unless and until you smoke with him. I mean, even if you don't smoke, you have to smoke. I mean, since I have come here, I have also spoiled my throat. It just they can't understand any rapport with a person. If they have to talk to someone, they will not say good morning, they'll offer a cigarette. It's so surprising that the way people have taken to smoking so madly that it, one can't understand. How can they? In India is the place where they produce so much of tobacco, but they don't smoke. On top of that, they have to crown it. We have other special smoking stuff, which we I have never seen them. They are grown in India. I mean, for people, even I have seen some president's wife was smoking that, somebody great, governor's uh, son is smoking that. I mean, nobody has any consciousness about him. To them, this, these things are like ganja and whatever they call it. I have never seen them, what sort of things they are. In India, only the servants' class do it, and that too of very low time. And they are treated just like lepers, they are kept outside the city. I mean, nobody has anything to do, nobody marries them, of course, they live like lepers. They also get into it by mistakes or something or bad company sometimes. But it's not a, at all a common practice for any educated or enlightened person or any in any way who has any brains in the head to do it. But even the villagers don't do it. Only some people, you see, who are, I don't know how, but I don't know of any Indian who smokes ganja so far. Can you believe it? I have servants, my husband's family has got servants, I mean, <laughs> my daughter's family has got so many servants. I don't know one person who smokes ganja in India. Can you believe it? And here you find every person is, uh, a lady came to see me, a wife of a very, very big man, I should say, American lady. And she said, oh, I really love England. I said, what is there to love in England? Oh, there are pubs, beautiful pubs. You don't get such pubs in America. And there is a pub where, is, where a man died and all the, what you call, uh, cow webs are there. It's a cow webs pub. And I went there in the cow webs pub and you can actually feel the cow webs. You see, imagine such a filth and uh, the man died and he was there for four months nobody discovered it and they carried the body out and still you see feel the haunting just think of this and that's how she liked and she enjoyed it very much and she said oh it's nice all places filled with smoke and you feel very happy there now these are the people who belong to this great country, which is the Vishuddhi of the world, which is responsible for the whole world <coughs> is smoking. And I am also at the end of this program, I've got a bad throat, I can tell you, because so much of smoking anywhere, you go to a shop, you better have a smoke, otherwise you can't exist. I don't know, I have a very sensitive throat, maybe.
Let us recite the Mahamantras. Thank you, Shimataji, for blessing us with this beautiful meditation. Let us all bow down to Shimataji, raise our Mother Kundalini, and give ourselves a bandhan. Let us meet again tomorrow morning, same time. Jai Shri Mataji.